I found out today Korea has a Costco that's the busiest and most profitable in the world. They go crazy for Costco in South Korea, man. We're, we're cooked again. <laughs> this is not even close. The population density, I think, makes perfect sense. There's not a chance. Bro, do you know, like, more people live in Seoul than, like, the entirety of the American Midwest. Don't fact check that. But there are like 20 million people in the metropolitan area, okay? If they all go to the same Costco, that shit's gonna be, it's gonna be printing money. If you leave out Chicago, that's probably true. Chicago's not part of the Midwest. We claim it as a coastal city. It's on the coast of Lake Illinois, or whatever the fuck that little, you know what I'm talking about. It's on the, it's on the water. That's Lake Michigan. Doesn't make any sense. Chicago's in Illinois. How would Chicago be on Lake Michigan? Chicago's more important than Michigan. They should call it Lake Chicago. It just is. <laughs> well, all right then. Based, I'm in Chicago. I reject the Midwest. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. Coastal cities. Sorry. Not part of the Midwest. Green Bay? Part of the Midwest, no doubt about it. St. Louis, Kansas City, without a doubt. Houston is coastal? No, sorry. Houston is part of the South. Not even, Houston's not even part of the South. Houston is part of Texas, which is an exclave from the American South. You got your, your American regionalisms all mixed up, okay? Chicago's not coastal. Nolan Soft, we covered this. Hours ago. It was like eight minutes ago. It's ancient history. I see you have premium Ohio internet. There's no need to insult him like that. Just because he's a little bit behind the times doesn't mean he's from Ohio. Could also be from Idaho, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kentucky, West Virginia, but not regular Virginia. North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, any of those states clumped up in the top right, Connecticut, Maine, et cetera, et cetera. Utah, that's a big one, Utah. You know what I was thinking this weekend? I bet I don't have a lot of viewers from Miami. I feel like my content, people sort of like, if you vibe with it, let me put it this way. When I was in Washington state, whenever I saw someone that looked like they were in my demo, I kind of hit them with a face, kind of hit them with like a, yeah, it's me. <laughs> I'm down here in Kirkland. I'm down here in Bellevue. I'm down here in Mill Creek. I'm near Shoreline. I'm at the Woodland Park Zoo. It's me. Yeah, you don't even have to ask. Then I was thinking about, like, I would feel the same in San Francisco, but not Los Angeles. Feel the same in Portland. I'd feel the same in the Twin Cities, I think, Minnesota, or Minneapolis, St. Paul. I feel the same in um, Milwaukee. I don't think I would feel the same in Miami at all. When I landed in Miami, I would be like, nobody here knows me. It's time to be completely anonymous. No adult that is willfully choosing to live in Miami has a personality that overlaps with liking the content that I produce on the internet. I think it's just, a, and there, I'm not making a value judgment on either one of those. I just think they're two completely disparate circles on a Venn diagram. If you go to Miami and you're like, this seems like a place where I would love to live the rest of my life, you probably would turn on my stream and be like, I don't get this at all. This guy sucks. First off, he's not wearing a white suit and sunglasses. <laughs> he's not drinking a uh, margarita that has a Corona tipped upside down into it. Dale to, Dale to you as well and live and let Dale. I've always said, I'm just saying, I don't think that I have much overlap with Miami. If I had to guess what major city in the United States has the least NL viewers per capita? Detroit. I said major city, okay? I think it would be Miami. I just have a feeling that people in Miami are not vibing with NL. Seattle is going to be up there, man. Vancouver's got to be like number one per capita because like, I feel like if you ever watch a streamer and they talk about where you're from, you're like, this is my guy for life. Lots of people from Milwaukee as well. You know, I've decided to spew more, uh, more Minnesota hate. Now knowing that so much of my demo is in Wisconsin. Fuck Minnesota. Let's get it go. Fuck Minnesota. 
Fuck Minnesota. Hey, hey, what the hell? Sorry, me and my boys in Milwaukee rolling deep saying fuck Minnesota. Hey, why don't you watch the Golden Gophers get their ass beat by, who did they lose to this weekend? Ohio State. Oh, fuck. I don't want to, I don't want to give them any respect either. <laughs> Washington's kind of goaded though. Now, I, I say this, there's, there's memery involved here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Holy cow, I won around. You ever think about how lucky Washington State has been with the businesses that have been founded in the state? Costco, Amazon, Microsoft, Boeing, they're, they're running the whole fucking infrastructure of the United States of America. That's crazy. Luck isn't involved. Was the natural geography of Seattle that makes people want to like sell books digitally there? It doesn't even make any damn sense. Oh, it's because they have no state level income tax. That's also, I, listen, people from Washington, I do want to say, do you know that your roads are loud as fuck? It's literally like as soon as you cross the border, you can't have a conversation anymore. Like I'm yelling at my wife, just being like, how are you doing? And I'm yelling at my kid, you okay back there? As soon as you end up in British Columbia, it's not perfect. People are driving off the road, you know, exploding all the time, but it's like, ah, it's bliss. Exploding? Yeah, those cars explode here, bro. Get over it. Why are the road lines invisible in Washington? I was telling Kate about that too. You know what I was, but I did it the opposite way. In Vancouver, we always talk about how when it rains, which it does 250 days a year, at night, the road lines become invisible because city council didn't paint, they didn't approve reflective paint because it's bad for the fucking environment. You know what's bad for the environment? The environment of me? My ass dying in a car crash because it's raining the way it does two thirds of the year. I can't see where the fucking lines on the road are. Anyway, so I was like, oh, it's so nice to be in Washington where they can use fucking nuclear paint to make the lines light up. Then it rained last night at night and I was like, I can't see shit, bro. They'd use the same paint. They got bit by the same scam. Whoever was selling the environmentally friendly road paint that doesn't work in the rain, they got all the rainiest cities in North America hooked up to the same teat. Like, I get they want to make driving less hospitable. That makes perfect sense. That being said, I thought that they should like make the speed limit on the roads lower and then design the roads with like more things that make it so you don't feel like you should be driving fast because you think you're going to crash instead. They shouldn't just make the roads invisible. People that drive slow cause accidents, not people that drive fast. You've lost your mind. Both demographics cause accidents, but people who drive too fast definitely cause accidents. That's like the, the speed cell copium gas is like, it's much better to drive at 90 miles an hour, but be confident to drive at 55, but be nervous. Like, no, it literally means you have like less time to react to things. Plus, I don't know how much taurine you fuckers drink in the morning, but it's crazy. People are angry as fuck on the road. And I'm like, bro, you're driving to Supreme Dumpling. Just relax a little bit. Like, this is not, you're not delivering, you know, the news that there's about to be an impending battle to the fucking leader of Athens in the year negative 400 BC, okay? You can take your time. The most irritating shit on the road without a doubt, is the person who, I'm in the right lane, okay? The slow lane, because on I-5 people have mental illness. They consider it like, that. that's the arena for them, is driving. And that's crazy to me, but I don't want any part of it. So I'm in the slow lane, and then somebody six cars back of me goes into the fast lane, passes, five cars, including myself, and then immediately merges back into my lane and then exits. And you just, when you do the rubber duck debugging and you stepwise look at what just happened, is like you risked the health and safety of like maybe five families to get to your exit five cars faster. We're all going 120 kilometers an hour you literally saved yourself 0.75 seconds. Like I, as soon as you exited, I was past the exit. That's how fast we're going. And you're like, what, what is wrong with you? You, have, you need to speak to a psychiatrist. 
you've lost your mind. And don't even get me started on, you know what's pissing me off about Washington? I, we're, we're making the bit, I'm gonna do every state in the union. It's a Sufjan Stevens bad boy comedy tour. Washington, you're up first. Get ready, Oregon, get ready. We're roasting every state. And we're not just going to do two and then call it a day and do a fucking album about a New York tunnel, okay? I want to drive in the slow lane in, on the I-5 because I don't want to die. This shit doesn't make any sense. I'm in the right lane. I pass an exit. Immediately after passing the exit, the right lane becomes exit only. But it's not my exit. Okay, so now I got to move over one lane to the left because the right lane is about to get subway surfer blocked, right? So I move over. Three minutes later, the lane that I just moved into becomes exit only. And I'm like, every two exits, they cut a lane out of the highway. I've been driving for two hours. There should be like negative 62 lanes on the freeway by now. How is this even possible? No matter, I move over to the middle lane, the middle lane becomes the right lane, they kill the right lane, I move over to the middle lane, I'm one lane away from the median, they cut the right lane, I got another new lane over here, the lanes just keep coming in from the other side. Why are you so driving pilled? It's my ass, I don't know, I probably put like 500 clicks on the damn caddy this weekend. There's no reason to drive in the right lane if you're not exiting. Is state law in Washington, motherfucker. You keep right except the pass. And unlike the majority of people on the road, I try to respect the foundations of the checks and balances that people have put before us to keep us all safe, okay? Also, the, other, the thing I want to say is I don't just go in the... I think about things on a societal level sometimes, not just an influ, uh, individual level, okay? Me getting in the right lane is good for me because I feel safer. Meanwhile, in British Columbia, I'm passing fools nonstop. I don't know what happens. As soon as they cross the border, people slow down like 30 clicks, which is probably better. But I'm like, I ain't got time for that. Regardless, though. First off, I'm in your country, so I'm following the rules of your land. Secondly, I recognize that if I'm driving slower than people in the left lane want to drive, it's better for society if I move over to the right. It's, it's saving collectively hours for people that I'll never meet in my life, but I still want them to follow their dreams, okay? Also, the... The right lane is pissing me off too, though, because then cars are trying to like merge into you and you're like, oh, I want to move over to the left lane. Then you get in the left lane and some dude in like a 1992 VW Golf is like, holy shit, he's doing 110 and I'm doing 112. I'm going to kill him. Just relax, man. We're all going to get, if we just give ourselves some space, we're all going to get there and be fine, okay? You ever hear of the middle lane? Yeah, but the middle lane is like the most fucked up of all the lanes on the highway. Because you're getting merged into by idiots in the slow lane and idiots in the fast lane. I always prefer to be on one edge or the other so you only gotta watch for merging traffic on one side. Middle lane is the, it's the scariest place to be unless you're Shadow Fiend. That's a coward's way of thinking. Well, here's the thing. People are like, just do this, just do this, blah, blah, blah. Well, motherfucker, have you looked at the road? Like, people are fucking crashing, dude. Fuck it, we got five. <laughs> People are like, here's what I do. And I'm like, I don't give a shit what you do. Every time I drive on the interstate, there's like eight cars turned over on fire and everybody's driving by like looking like this. Obviously what we're doing as a society is not foolproof. And then just go ahead and say it. Skill difference. That couldn't be me. Only bad drivers get in accidents. That's why they're called accidents. Vancouver doesn't even have freeways. Excuse me, little bro. You ever hear about the intersection of Oak and 70th at 5.15 p.m. on a weekday? Sheesh! It's insane that there's not more murder in Vancouver. Because you can feel the collective blood pressure rise. By the way, you should know, in Vancouver, we don't really have advanced left turn lights. Um, every major arterial is two lanes, and the left lane gets clogged as fuck because you have to wait for the person at the front turning left to make it through on a green. But all the oncoming traffic coming straight comes through, there's no gaps, and then like nine cars cheat on the yellow, so only one or two cars get to make it through on the red when they were supposed to be turning left on a green. It's like, I don't know why we as a city allow this to happen. You're right, we skipped it on the tech tree. Oak in 70th when the 15 cars left through the red and get caught in the intersection. Oh, and everyone's looking. You know what's crazy to me? Other parts of the city, 
So, by the way, it's the worst Super Auto Pets content ever made, and I love it. Other parts of the city, if somebody makes a mistake and gets caught in the intersection, they get hit with the honk of shame for the entire duration. Honk! Honk! Then, at Oak and 70th, Oak and Park, Oak and 49th, Oak and 41st, if people end up in the intersection, nobody even honks because they've seen it a thousand, they, they knew it was already gonna, as soon as the, the white Tesla Model 3 pulled out in the intersection, I know the walk signal said there were still 15 seconds until uh, the light was gonna change. They're like, that fucker's not making it through. It's not gonna happen. There's a dude, two intersections up, turn and left, the traffic's in gridlock, you're not gonna make it. Everyone just sits there and goes, yep. Yeah, this is normal. It's normal for the light to turn green. And for you to be the second person in line to go straight and not be able to make it through. This is normal. This is normal. I got to run for city council. <laughs> I feel like if I could be, a, if I'd be on city council, I could, I could win 90% of the electorate just by saying, I'm going to bring eight protected left turn signals into Vancouver. I'm trying to think of where they would be. Definitely Oak and 70th would be close to the top of the list. I'm trying to think of where else you could use some. There's a lot. We could even just put seven of them on Oak Street or Granville Street. Kingsway needs some too. It's your most dangerous time you're ever driving in Vancouver is when your ass is on Kingsway. Everyone's going 80 kilometers an hour and then the dude in front of you signals that he's going to turn left in 10 seconds. Everybody merges without looking at their blind spot at all. Holy. Anyway, what was I talking about? How about more than one lane moving east and west? Brother, come on. You got, you got a couple of shitty roads that go east-west. What are you complaining about? You got fucking... Give me a second here. You got 16th. 16th that always gets fucking blocked off and every uh, second block has parking in the right lane and then the next one doesn't so everybody merges over and then the next one they go... And you, you get the idea. 16th is like a half at best. Okay, okay, okay. What about, um, uh, what about 41st? I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, NL, that's not even Vancouver anymore. Like, don't even get me started on 70th. Once you end up in that 41st and below region, like, what do you even do? Just move to Richmond at that point. Okay, you know, you got a good point. I forgot that Vancouver really is basically just from like 16th north for people who live 16th and north. It's tough. I got to think. What else we got there? There's, there's lots of roads, okay? There's lot, they're all clogged, but there's lots of roads. South Van starts at 12th. That's fucking crazy, bro. 12th? 12th? South Van is where there's no more cool restaurants. And Mount Pleasant runs from like 8th to 16th. Come on. It's ridiculous. We've been on this turn for 20 minutes. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I've been... Crunching the numbers, okay? I just hate South Van. I know. Anytime I'm driving through it, I'm like, nobody lives here. Why is there so much traffic? It's like Richmond is full of skyscrapers. The northern part of Vancouver that's not North Vancouver is full of skyscrapers. You're asking Marpole is just single family homes and townhouses. I'm like, why the fuck are there 35 million cars here? It's insane. Anyway, sorry. So I know I lost a lot of people in that bit. I entered a fugue state temporarily. Like, where are you going, man? Oh, stole me. Stoned man. Buys a stoat each time he can sell me. It became level three lioness stone man. <laughs> is that even how it goes? Oh, it's Friday. It's the first full work week I've had in a while. Da 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 da